So thank you for joining me. Tamitha Bibble, principal at Pollard Middle School and Jessica Downey, principal at High Rock. Needham is fortunate to have a fantastic middle school program, grades six through eight, and I would really appreciate it if maybe we could share some of the highlights of what's been going on so far this year. Jessica, how has the year started for our sixth graders at High Rock? What we found is our students are really strong and we have the resources in place to support those students who need that additional support. What we expected was some sense of students' social emotional skills maybe not being as developed, but what we realized when we got back into the school is that being in absence of a school, structures, routines, caring adults who can hold students accountable and help them take risks in growing, that really took a hit for students. And we have spent the first semester of school really practicing schools, practicing how do we interact with each other? How do we share? How do we resolve conflict? Mm -hmm. I think when students were living alone in their homes with their family, there's a different dynamic. And the, the coming back together as a community, we're still fostering that sense of who we are and how we all belong here and what we need to do to build this community. Are you seeing some of the same things at, at Pollard with kids? I think what's happening in seventh and eighth grade are similar um, I want to say uh, SEL questions that we have around social to, emotional learning. Social emotional learning. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Um, how do we interact with one another? How do we advocate for what we need in, in a proper way? Um, even being in a classroom and working together, what does that look like? And setting boundaries too. So when we think about our technology, students have access to technology at their fingertips, whether it be an iPad or even their cell phones. Most students have phones with them. And so working with them on what is appropriate, what is not, and having that time to do so, whether we use advisory to talk about some of our concerns or in the classroom setting. Um, something Jessica and I, though, have shared and we've been really proud of is we've seen students have um, uh, incredible advocacy skills mm. this year in ways that we haven't in the past. So what does that mean? What does that look like? Um, so they're asking to start clubs. They're asking to start activities to get involved. Uh, last week alone, we had a pajama drive, a sock drive, a food drive, a gift drive for children. Jess, I imagine that some of the advocacy is happening at High Rock as well. Uh, students are, are stepping up, as you indicated. I, I do want to. I want to just check in for a moment about behavior. You know, you talked about there has been some unfortunate, and it's incredibly rare at Pollard mm -hmm. for for some some vandalism, some tagging, if you will, in some of the bathrooms, some of the boys' bathrooms. Um, and and Jess, you mentioned trying to help students kind of reacclimate to the classroom. What does some of that behavior look like? First of all, at High Rock, and and what what are we trying to do to to mitigate or to get to to help students with behavior? And then maybe at Pollard. Well, I think at High Rock, and I, I think you have to be working with middle school kids to love middle school kids. Uh, we run everywhere. We run from the front door to the bathroom to the classroom. We're just running everywhere. <laughs> However, it's, it's taken us. It's very true. I, I see that. I see that at High Rock. When the students get. However, what I B. really appreciate is the par the patience of our teachers, because we're so used to that's unsafe. You shouldn't do that, and that's not what I'm hearing from my teachers. I'm hearing. We need to practice this. Let's slow down. We need to practice how do we walk in the hallway. Let's practice how do we wait in line. Let's practice how do we pass in our notebooks or finish our assignments. So our teachers have recognized where our students are at and are really trying to reframe the thinking to the, they're just not there yet. Um, I think this year with more outdoor time, mm -hmm. Uh, our assistant principal and the staff who supervise lunch have done a fantastic job providing opportunities for students to interact with each other. Parents, within a weekend, donated so many playground equipment material so students could interact with each other. But even the simple game as four square is difficult because it means taking turns, you know, being positive when you're out, supporting each other. We actually found that students were struggling playing that game safely, that our wellness teachers shifted some of their curriculum and they actually, the day before Thanksgiving, spent the day um, taping down four square boxes in their gymnasium. So when they came back from the Thanksgiving break, they could teach all students in the school the game of four square, the sportsmanship with that, um, and how to interact and include all students. 
and we have seen a great improvement of students' behavior ever since. It's been fantastic. And, and at, the, at, at Pollard also, you've been providing games at lunchtime to, to keep kids, the, to channel the energy to create, to make it more positive uh, rather than negative behavior. Correct. Yeah. So I think, uh, again, as Jess highlighted, our families have been incredibly supportive. And so we put out an ask through the PTC for games, and we've got a huge donation of Jenga and chess and Uno and you name it, and every day we bring the games out, the students eat their lunch, then they go and they grab a game. We also had a sing-along this week with Frozen in the cafeteria, <laughs> uh, which was quite exciting. Um, and we're just listening to the students. Uh, what we're finding, and, and I think you saw this last week when we visited classrooms, in the classroom themselves, the students are incredibly focused, engaged, well-behaved. They're interacting appropriately with their it, teachers and peers. It's almost true that at Pollard and High Rock, when I visit, they don't want me to interrupt them. Yeah, you, yeah. you notice that. They've been yeah. really, really uh, focused yeah. and they, engaged. It's been, it's been incredible, and it's more in our unstructured spaces. Mm -hmm. So our hallways, our cafeteria, outdoors. So we're reframing and realizing the students haven't even you know, things as simple as walking on the right side of a hallway to be polite to others passing are just reminders that we've had. Um, but the TV news, uh, which is a new segment at Pollard, has been That's brand fantastic. new, another, another yeah. way for students to advocate and to get involved. Absolutely, and it's been fun because the students have said to us, we notice masks are a problem, Ms. Bibbo. Can we do a little segment and kind of poke fun at it a little bit and also remind students to wear their masks properly? Or we've noticed that students are pushing in the hall. Can we do a little segment on pushing in the hall and how that's not appropriate? So it's been really exciting that the students are, have owned this also and want to be involved in the solution. Well, it, it, there's no question that there has been an impact. Uh, COVID, we're still living with COVID. Yeah. We're still managing it in the schools. There are some kids who, who do test positive and, and or are close contacts. Uh, but this is a bit of the fallout from, you know, the, the effects of the pandemic. And, and I think both at Pollard and High Rock, you're really helping kids uh, learn to work together, play together, um, and, and really uh, grow and learn in a, in, a, in a safe environment, one that we continue to, to focus on health, uh, health and safety. What I'm thrilled about is that our kids are back in school yes. full time. Even as we manage uh, the masking and as we manage COVID, it's still there. I want to shift for a moment and, and talk about the future. One of the conversations that you are both involved in and that the, com the school committee is involved in is a conversation about whether or not it's time now to uh, renovate the Mitchell Elementary School and also Pollard. And one of the big ideas is to bring grades six through eight together on one campus yeah. uh, for those kids. Um, Jess, why don't we start with you. What, what, are, the, what are the opportunities and the challenges in, in the time that we have left that, uh, to bring those sixth graders um, onto one campus? I am really proud of the work that happens at High Rock to support students coming from an elementary program to a middle school program. And we, we recognize that behind the scenes, there are things that are lost for middle schoolers when they're in a single grade experience. And we don't highlight those because there's nothing we can do right now to change that. But in the looking forward, to have the opportunity to bring grades sixth, seventh, and eighth grade together, to have developmentally pro appropriate programming, to provide a wide variety of resources for students. What we're seeing in High Rock, we're working really hard with our our department leaders and our curriculum coordinators to make sure the content skills and scope and so scope and sequence is across six, seven, and eight. But where is the SEL? Where is the sense of community? Where is the idea that I can come in as a sixth grader and have a safe environment within my cluster or within my hallway, but also have eighth graders to look up to, to have some of those annual traditions that I know I can have mentors that I look up to that I want to achieve that as well. I think there's a stronger sense of community when we bring those three grades together. Right now, I think Pollard and High Rock do a really great job with that, but that doesn't mean a single year works for all students. And I mm -hmm. think that there are so many great benefits that we could have by bringing us together. Well, and I think there's some efficiencies involved, as you mm -hmm. said, a shared cafeteria, auditorium. Tamitha, real quickly, there are some needs, some real building needs at, at Pollard. Yes. Pick off a couple of them that we need to address. So I do think if we bring sixth grade back in, which is very exciting for mm. all the things just shared and so much more, our shared programming, I do think we have to look at um, having more space in our cafeteria, our auditorium, our gyms, those larger common spaces. I also think that we need to think about really, I think, take some time to think about how can we keep sixth grade 
Um, and that, that community and that sense of sixth grade, maybe even a little bit separate from seventh and eighth. All Some call it a school campus. within a school, perhaps. Yeah. Um, you know, I think our HVAC system, our heat system, sometimes, you know, might need Science some classrooms. More. Science classrooms for sure. Absolutely. An upgrade in yeah. those so that they could be 21st century. Um, we're looking at things like our TV studi studio is a classroom that we've converted, but how amazing would it be? to be able to have an innovation hub yeah. where kids are able to use that. And our engineering design mm -hmm. program is outstanding and our data science is growing. So how do we look at courses like that and look at our space and say, how do we make it? The, the, um, ex, you know? the, the space certainly complements the program and, there, and it's time for Pollard to have a significant upgrade yes. um, so that the space can, can meet the program needs. Well, a ton of great things going on at Pollard and High Rock. Our students are back. Yes. And that's what we're really excited about. And they're learning and they're yes. staying safe and healthy. And we're thinking to the future about the possibility of bringing six through eight back together on one campus. Yes. Tamitha and Jessica, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.